Hey guys, I'm back and today we're going to be talking about Avengers Endgame. Aren't you that comic book girl that hasn't been posting for like a year? Yes, hello, let's address. I am officially coming back. I'm going to be doing weekly videos again and uh, for those that are the casual viewer that have just popped onto this channel, hello, hi, my name is Kim. I used to make comic book videos on this channel. I'm going to be continuing to do it. So if you don't want to hear me ramble about some random stuff, then I'm going to put a timestamp here so you can jump straight into the review. But for those of you that want to stay and chat quickly before we jump into this review, let's do it. So firstly, guys, I just want to address obviously the last video that I posted. That video was quite hard for me to post, but I did it. It took a lot of doing and editing and taking it back and putting it forward again and going, you know what? Fuck it. Just post it. So I did post it and it's just been an overwhelming amount of support and love from you guys. And you've, you've just had so much patience and stuff for me and I just want to say thank you so much that's not the comment like honestly the comments made me cry they were just so lovely nice thoughtful thank you so much I love you and we're going to move past this I'm in a much better place now as you can see I'm all peppy and stuff I just want to do a quick thank you for all the support for the last video thank you so much but now it is time for the main event of this video we're going to be talking about Avengers Endgame oh my god I just thought I have to come back with this video this has to this has to be my video that I start with again because I'd be crazy not to right I don't even know where to begin with this honestly it's been a decade of Marvel like like my whole my whole young life has been Marvel everything about it is I was in high school when it started and now I'm not <laughs> It's been a crazy movement and for it to all kind of, I mean, obviously it's not ending, but it kind of is, but it isn't, you know, but like phase one, phase whatever, you know, it's kind of over. <sighs> Let's talk about Endgame. So overall, it was a fantastic movie. Like it was, it was, it was emotional. It was an emotional roller coaster the whole three hours and I did not want to pee once. And that in itself is a feat. Like, you know, to, to not actually think about needing to pee because that's constantly what I think about needing to pee. Firstly, I want to talk about the layout of the film. So, I, I know it's a weird place to start, but I'm a filmmaker, so I kind of like talking about things like that and the structure, but what ifs? People saying that the first act and a lot of it was a bit slow, but I'm like, so what? Like, this is our last Marvel film. It's not going to be a copy and paste of set up problem villain. Well, I mean, technically it was that, but it was sort of interwoven throughout the whole film. There were so many different elements they had to address. Some people's last moments. So they really had to kind of just get all that emotional feels out before the end game. <laughs> I actually thought it was really great, the slow progression. I like a slow progression at the beginning of the movie because I'm always really interested in characters and character progression, the character arc storylines. I feel like a lot of the characters in this film, especially like the OG Marvel characters in the cinematic universe that we've been introduced to, we know their personality so well. We know a lot about them, but in this film we saw actually new elements to them. We saw a really dejected, depressed and down fall, which is something you know, we've seen a comedic side to him, but we've never really seen like a, like a destroyed Thor. We saw a chill and nerdy Hulk, which was definitely very new. We saw a very sensitive and emotional, sweet side of Tony Stark. Not that he wasn't, but it was obviously hard for elements to come out. So with his daughter, it was like, oh my God, just my heart stopped. And we even got to see really vulnerable moments between Black Widow and Hawkeye as well. We saw a lot of emotional stuff at the beginning of this and I think it was really good to kind of start with that and have a very slow progression into what they were going to do. So I actually really enjoyed having that slow beginning. I think it gave the film, a bit, uh, the film a bit more worth because of what had happened. At the end of Infinity War, we needed to be slowly nudged into the storyline because it was obviously going to be a big, massive <sighs> emotional roller coaster at the end there. I don't want to touch upon any of the time travel really or like the logistics of the time travel because I personally really hate kind of st time travel things. I mean some things are okay but I just don't like the, the physics side of it. I'm just gonna take what they've told us at face value. This is how the time travel works. This is how it worked for them. All these events happen and this is what it equaled to so I'm not gonna even touch upon any time travel stuff in any plot holes regarding the time travel so not touching that. The last thing I wanted to talk about in terms of the layout was the end battle. So, in um, Infinity War, I actually thought the end battle 
um, was a bit like crazy and I couldn't really, there was just so many different things going on. You had Tony and his crew fighting Thanos and then you had the Wakanda battle and all this kind of stuff happening there with Thanos' disciples and there was just, there was just a lot going on and all the characters kind of were just joining at random times and I thought it was a bit all over the place and it was hard for me to kind of get involved in the battle because I just, I can't stand CGI massive battles. They just annoy me. All of the emotional aspect is taken out for me. I mean, I don't mind a good fight scene, but I do like to have the emotional impact behind it and I felt like we did not get that in Infinity War. That's just my personal opinion. I mean, I love the homage to A Phantom Menace, but Besides for the hilarious memes, I didn't particularly like that battle that much. I thought it was just a bit kind of show off CGI and not really doing a huge amount to the plot except for that end section when Thanos obviously snapped his fingers and then none of them could stop him. This battle I freaking loved. I thought that the way that they structured it was fantastic. Every single character melded with each other. It all worked perfectly. One of my favorite things in that battle actually is um, the passing of the Infinity Gauntlet. Like they were going like through a game of catch and like trying to keep it away from the villains. They started with some of the OG characters with it and then they passed it on to newer characters throughout. So they got Spider-Man and then Captain Marvel took it. It was like passing the Marvel Olympic torch onto all of the Marvel characters. I just thought that was great. It was like a great kind of little metaphorical look through Marvel history to all the different characters and almost like the way that they all debuted as well. I was like, well done. That was just, to, to do that in a big CG battle, C, CG battle? CGI battle was, is hard to do. And um, I thought they did a fantastic job with that. And I am just, I'm just really happy with how that scene played out. Like, honestly, for a CGI battle, I was like, I'm really into this. The last thing I want to talk about for structure is the credits. Ooh, and this is probably where we get emotional. The way that they did the credits with the, you know, the OG Avengers with their faces and their signatures. Oh my God, what a fantastic way to do it. And everyone's waiting to the end for that post credit scene. No one wants to check if there is one or not because we don't want to know, just don't tell us. We just tell us there is one. This is what we do. We wait for the end credit scene. That's what we're here for. We're Marvel fans. And there wasn't a post credit scene. I was angry for a little while and then I was like, you know what, that's, that's fair. That's, you know, it's fair, it's fair. Just how it had to be. This is the end game. And you know, it's better without an end scene because the impact is stronger. But the little sound bite, oh my God. It was so subtle, so perfect, but really had that major impact on, on Tony and the whole beginning of the franchise to how the franchise ended and all that kind of stuff. If you missed it, which I'm sure you didn't, of, of Tony making his original suit in the first Iron Man film, we hear him hammering on, on his suit and making it. And obviously it's a homage to Tony Stark and everything he did in the end there and everything he's done throughout the whole Marvel franchise. Now I want to talk about specific things in the film, things that I really liked, things that maybe I didn't quite like, things that needed to not be in there at all. Just things I desperately want to discuss. So let's, let's just get into it. Tony Stark and his daughter. Oh my God. Every single time they came on screen, I was like, these two are the ultimate duo. They are so cute. She is so like him. And the whole like, I love you 3000, I was dying. I couldn't believe that they'd given him and Pepper a child, but it was just such a perfect moment and to show that life continues on after Infinity War. And let's just talk about the sacrifice at the end, because we're talking about Tony Stark as a whole. I mean, look, it had to happen. It started with Tony, it had to end with Tony. You know, that's just, that was just it. But it was so emotional. Just that look from Doctor Strange, I was like, this is it. He's just gone and, you know, just, even Pepper just saying you can rest now, like it's okay, just just rest. I love you 3000, oh my god, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting emotional. Next thing I wanted to talk about, and yes, these are all very random things, but they're things that I thought about in the movie and I'm, I'm gonna talk about that later because that's something I wanna chat about. So, just after they've all kind of come back, they've all got the stones, the Hulk is doing his thing with the Infinity Gauntlet, erases everything that's just happened and supposedly everyone comes back. Clint gets that phone call from his wife, which FYI came from her mobile, right? 
This is five years later. How the hell does her phone still work? See me just playing her plan, just hoping like one day she'll appear back. Like it doesn't make sense. Like at least make it come from the home phone, not her mobile phone. Why is the plan still active? Why does she have her phone? Did her phone disappear with her? Very confusing. Anyway, the point of this conversation is from that phone call and her speaking to him, we know that it, it's successful. It's happened. They've come back. So the fact that she's back means that it worked. Otherwise, you know, what's the point of that scene? So later on in the battle, we're all just like, okay, everyone's getting their ass kicked. The Avengers facility's blown up. Where the hell is everyone? They're obviously back. What are you doing? What are you doing? When are you going to come in? You know, what the hell? Eventually, they do come back through all the different portals from Doctor Strange, but for me, I mean, yes, that was like, yes, finally they're back. But for me, it wasn't like, oh my God, they're back, thank God. It was that finally, what took you so long? Because A, we knew that they were coming back and B, I didn't, I didn't have another point. There wasn't this constant like fear of, oh my God, what if it didn't work? There wasn't that because we got told from that earlier phone call that it obviously worked. Yes, there could be some like anomaly that only like a couple of people came back, but come on as if. I feel like they could have just gotten rid of that scene with Clint in the phone call because otherwise that just gave away too much. Like just throw that away. And then in the whole battle, we're just like on our edge of our seats going, did it work? Where is everyone? Oh my God, I'm scared. You know, I otherwise just not going, <sighs> They're a bit late, you know, I mean, is the bus is late or what's... The next thing I wanted to talk about was Captain America as a whole. I did predict that he would kind of stay in the past because he was the only one that really doesn't fit in in this new world. Everyone loves him to pieces, but he hasn't really kind of adapted to everything. He's just been like, work, work, work. And now the fact that Thanos has been defeated and there's not really, like, there's always going to be something going on, but nothing on the scale of maybe something that he's got to do about it. So he's just like, well, maybe I'll have a life now, especially since he saw like what Tony got out of it with his daughter and Pepper and everything. So um, I kind of had this feeling he'd say in the past and he did, that was really sweet at the end. I did think he'd pass the mantle on to Bucky, so the Winter Soldier became the Cap Captain America, but I'm actually really glad they gave it to Sam, it's a little bit different, and I'm really excited to see what happens with the Captain America character and how Sam takes on the mantle. The last thing I wanted to talk about for Captain America was that scene in the elevator when they went to the past and they had the, the Hydra agents in the elevator and it was like nostalgic of that other scene. Oh my god, because obviously Winter Soldier is my favourite Marvel film, like that film is just absolute perfection. That scene was amazing and then they just redid it in this amazing form, fantastic. And the fact that he whispers, Hail Hydra. That was just some great political shite going on there. That whole thing with S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hydra and its whole past and he's like, Hail Hydra. It was just such a simple word but everyone was just like, mmm. Well done. Also, the freaking controversy from Secret Empire 2017, Captain America. Freaking saying Hail Hydra, he's a Hydra agent. Oh, that was just so smart to include it in the cinematic universe. A really, really great merging of comic book history. I applaud whoever made that decision. Well done. The next thing I wanted to talk about was Black Widow and Hawkeye. If we think about it, these two are the most expendable Marvel characters physically because they don't have superpowers or big fat suits to help them get around. I mean, yes, they are, you know, epic in their own right, but like, they're not like losing Thor or Captain America. Like that would be a massive loss to the battle. They're in a, a massive emotional loss, that definitely, but you know, so I felt like sending these two to go get the soul stone, I was like, ooh, that's a tough one, you know, because it's like, ugh. I think a lot of people expected Hawkeye to get axed here. I just feel like Black Widow and Natasha is just so much better physically than Hawkeye. I feel like she could just kick the shit out of him. So the way that that kind of ended, I felt like was kind of true to the characters. She's thinking about him and his family coming back. She doesn't really have a family or like a major connection except for the Avengers themselves. And she's doing this really because she knew it would work. So I feel like that, I, I was shocked that it happened, but I was like, well, to get that stone, something had to happen. Lastly, I wanted to talk about Captain Marvel. Now, I haven't talked about Captain Marvel obviously on this channel because the movie came out when I wasn't making videos. 
but I didn't overly had a problem with her little little prelude to actually talking about Captain Marvel. I didn't actually have a problem with her film, like I thought it was enjoyable enough, but it was just a standard Marvel film. I think a lot of people were thinking that they were going to really kind of go all out and really raise Captain Marvel because she's the first female superhero film, solo film in the Marvel Universe. Well, let's not count bloody Elektra and all that. <laughs> I guess people thought that it would be very female empowered, like Wonder Woman esque, but you gotta think about it. Marvel is a very copy and paste kind of studio and layout that they've got for their films. So it just felt like, yes, another Marvel film, which, yes, can be a negative, but the positive side is they're always really equal. So, you know, I guess they're more like, well, we're not gonna do anything different because why? You know what I mean? So if they make a deal out of it, it's like, well, we're acknowledging that we haven't had any female solo films in the past and that's wrong so we're gonna make a big deal out of this one compared to some of you know the other films so I feel like that was fine Captain Marvel's character to me isn't that interesting she's kind of I feel like a cardboard cutout she doesn't overly have a personality so in this film it was kind of like she was gonna be the savior of everything but she was just like came in at the beginning saved Tony and then came at the end destroyed ship I mean, there's not much more that she did. She's obviously a very super powered person, so having her in and doing a whole bunch of stuff would obviously, would that tip the scales too much? I don't know, but I feel like Thor is pretty powerful in his own right, and they always did well with putting him somewhere, so I don't quite get Captain Marvel in this universe. I feel like she needs a personality lift. She just doesn't compete well against all the other amazing Marvel characters. She did okay in the battle, it was alright. I wouldn't say it was amazing, but you know, acknowledge that she's in there. Yeah. Overall, I feel like that's everything I can probably fit into this video. This is gonna be a massively long video and I'm so sorry about that. But there's just so much I wanted to talk about and there's probably a lot more that I could talk about, but I just, I'm gonna stop now because I'm losing my voice. I'm getting emotional here. But guys, let me know what you thought of the film and leave me a comment below. I would say no spoilers, but this is a spoiler video. So, I mean, any sane person is not gonna click on this video and then scroll straight to the comments. I mean, it's not like I do that. <laughs> Definitely let me know in the comments below and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel I will be doing weekly videos and talking about comic book stuff and it would also be great if you follow me on my social media I am really probably the most active on Instagram. My Instagram is at Kimberly Melville, which is my name I also have a Twitter, but I don't really use it that much But I'll leave links to all of that in the description below and once again guys Thank you so much for all your support on the last video you guys are the best so I just wanted to say, yeah, a big fat thank you for that. Next week is free comic book day. Oh my God, I can't believe it's come around again. Last year I didn't even go because I was in my own emotional hole. So this year I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that. I'm gonna see if I can do a vlog and then that will be next week's video. I hope you enjoy this video guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.